Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm up here at the podium. You can't, you can't see my lips moving, but it's, it, it's me. My name's, my name's Scott Lowe, and I'm the uh, Associate Dean in the Graduate College. I'm the Acting Dean this year. You're going you're gonna to hear from me multiple times today, so you'll, you'll be tired of me by the time the afternoon is over. But we have the great fortune of welcoming the president of Boise State University, Dr. Marlene Trump. Please give her a welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. So good to see you. Um, I had a, a very, very sweet undergraduate student say to me about a year and a half ago when we were still having big events, it was at our dance marathon. She said, I think it's so cute, Dr. Trump, that you wear orange and blue every single day. I said, I don't wear orange and blue every single day. <laughs> but at the things that the undergrads see me at, you know, usually that's what I'm wearing, like at a football game or a basketball game or something like that. Um, and I just came from the convocation for the brand new students and they just made their B out on the blue. And so um, I am broncoed out already for the day. I, and so this doesn't give me a lot of intellectual gravitas. <laughs> But I really am a professor, <laughs> the Chuck Taylors especially. Um, <clears throat> I'm a professor of English, and uh, I, I am trained in women and gender studies as well. And I'm just really proud to welcome you to Boise State University and to tell you some amazing things about this graduate program. Um, you probably know that we're classified by Carnegie a high research institution, and Carnegie is the organization that ranks universities based on their research. We are doing cutting edge research at Boise State University. There are people who are expanding their fields of knowledge all over this university, and what really excites me is not just that they're doing it, but that you will too. What really is thrilling to me is that what graduate school is all about, and I don't think I honestly knew this when I was an undergrad. I, when I started graduate school, I don't think I understood this. Graduate school is all about you becoming a knowledge creator. And that's absolutely thrilling. You will make discoveries in whatever field you're in. You will make discoveries and think thoughts and write things and say things and do things that other people have never done before. And a part of the reason that you will do that, and it's, you know, it's required. I mean, that's how you get your master's or your doctorate, is by doing that thing, creating new knowledge. But a part of the reason it's so important that you're here is literally, literally, no one can think the thoughts that you think and do the things that you do. Your experiences and the structure of your mind are entirely unique to you. Entirely unique to you. There is nobody who is built just as you are, which means your knowledge, the things that you think and the things that you do will be indispensable because they could only have come from you. So this is really an awesome thing to get the privilege to do. And I'm a first generation graduate, first generation college graduate. Um, when I decided to go to graduate school, my dad was like, uh, whatever help I gave you before, like I'm done. <laughs> like I've, I've given and given and given. And my dad worked a lot of overtime in the Trona mines to make it possible for me to go to college. And so I had to figure a lot of stuff out when I was in grad school and also when I was an undergrad financially. It's so worth it. You are gonna blaze trails and that's what this university is known for. You know, I just brought a whole bunch of people, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them onto that blue turf I got to tell you that when I um, when it was announced a few years ago that I was coming here to be president, one of my friends called me and said, get rid of the blue turf. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Seriously. But what's so special about that blue turf 
is it is a metaphor. It is a powerful emblem for who we are at this university. We're an institution that likes to break the rules and think outside the box and do things in ways they've never been done before. We're an institution that is proud to call what we do blue turf thinking. We've been nationally recognized for being one of the most innovative universities in the country. We have the largest graduate school in the state of Idaho. We graduate more graduate students than any public institution in the state of Idaho. And you are gonna be a part of a powerful coalition of people that's bringing blue turf thinking to your field. So it is my great honor and privilege to welcome you to this university and to tell you that you're about to embark on it. I, one of the greatest things that happened to me when I went to graduate school is basically I loved every single class because you're now gonna be studying in the field that you love. So you're about to embark on this extraordinary adventure where you're gonna be working side by side with faculty who are changing the world and you are gonna be a part of that project from now on. So thank you for having the courage to start this experience. And let me tell you one last thing before I turn the mic back over to your awesome Dean. It's easy to think when you get to your graduate program, it's easy to think, I, I'll, I'll tell you what, so I went to graduate school before the internet. My son is like, there was, he's 19. There was a before? <laughs> like, yes, my dear. That wasn't like in the middle ages or something. Yes. So I went to school before the internet and my first graduate seminar, there were so many things the professor said that I did not know what she was talking, like no clue what she was talking about. I, the words were so foreign to me, it was like she was speaking a language I didn't understand. So I'm trying to calm myself in a panic as I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm just gonna write in the margins all the words that I don't know and then I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna get out my Merriam-Webster's dictionary and I'm gonna look them all up. Pretty soon there was way more margin than there was notes and I just started bleeding right over into the page. And then I got home and I, I dutifully pulled out my dictionary and like not one, not one of those words was in the dictionary because it was all these really high theoretical terms. And I thought, oh, I don't know if I can do this. So I want to give you one last thing before I go. There's a researcher at Stanford University named Carol Dweck. And she's been study studying something called growth mindset for about 30 years. Now, when she began the project, what she thought she was going to find is that there was something inherent in some people that made them more likely to stick it out when they face challenges. She thought she was going to discover there was some inherent quality. She called it grit. That's what we call it in Wyoming, where I grew up. Grit. That kid's got some grit. What she discovered was something that completely surprised her. It was not about an inherent quality that somebody had or didn't have. It was purely about mindset. And somebody who had the mindset that when they failed, they were learning and they were growing. And anyone here who's studying neuropsych knows you just have explosive neural network pathway growth when you're learning something new. When it's hard, when you're struggling, you're just like, your brain is just like explosively growing. So when you face those moments, do not have a fixed mindset which says, I don't belong here. I'm not cut out for this. Do not have a fixed mindset. Have a growth mindset which says, now I'm gonna learn and experience new things and I'm gonna grow and this struggle is actually my pathway to success. I saw brilliant people who didn't finish graduate school because they didn't know that thing, that one thing. I promise you, you can be successful here. 
you were chosen to be here. Our superb faculty looked at you and said, you belong. So what you need to do now, when you face those struggles, when you face those challenges, when you fall down, and I got to tell you, I've done that so many times in my career, I can't count. I had a group of students say to me once, tell us about one of them. And I was like, I just, and my head is now like a flip book because there's so many. When you fall down, remember, what you're here to do is learn. That's what a university is. It's not a loss. It's not a failure. And pick yourself back up and figure out what you need to learn from that experience and move on. Because that's what's going to make you a tenacious blue turf thinker. That's what's going to make you a knowledge creator. And I am so glad that you are here because we need you. The world needs your minds. We need your new thinking. We are facing challenges like we've never faced before. We need your minds. So thank you for bringing your unique talents, your unique experiences to Boise State University and we're going to respond with some of the most amazing faculty and experiences that you can possibly have and go out there and change the world. Thank you.